how could we purify our water simply, easily, on the spot, right where we want to use it? Now, I'm going to tell you the story of three different people that are trying to do that. And the common thread between these people is that all three of them use nanotechnology to clean their water. So the first story is Michael Pritchard. He's an engineer and inventor in the UK. And about six years ago, he was sitting on his couch watching TV, and he was watching the aftermath of the tsunami in Southeast Asia. And a few months after that, the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. And he noticed that there were these people surrounded by water and not a drop of it was safe to drink. And he thought it's so difficult to get fresh, clean water to these people in disaster situations. And he was inspired to do something about it. He created the Lifesaver bottle. It's a very simple device. All you have to do is unscrew the bottom, and then you take some water, any old dirty water you can find, pour it in the bottom of the bottle. Then when I screw the lid back on, I just pump this handle a few times. And then what comes out the other end is sterile, fresh drinking water. It's perfectly safe to drink. It's been purified and cleaned. And this is a really simple device, easy to use, that you could have fresh drinking water anywhere you needed it from any old source. Now, it's a great technology. Um, and the way it works is similar in some ways to the regular water filters we use, but there's one important difference that I'm gonna talk about. So all water filters are just membranes that have holes. You can think about it a little bit like a kitchen sieve, where you pour water through, water gets through the holes, but the membrane traps everything else. Now obviously a water filter has much smaller holes because we're trying to keep out these microbes that are too small to see. So I want to talk about the microbes for a minute. I have little models of a bacteria and a virus. And if you think about bacteria and viruses as little teeny tiny versions of this, you would be wrong because bacteria and viruses are really not that similar. It turns out bacteria are much, much bigger than viruses. If I was to take a bacteria and blow it up to be the size of an entire human being, it would be, uh, by comparison, a virus would be smaller than that. Actually, it would be more like this little guy. Bacteria are hundreds of times bigger than viruses. Now that's important to know when we're trying to filter uh, bacteria and viruses out of our water. Because most um, water filters, as we can think about them, like this kitchen sieve as a model, this cup represents dirty water. I have orange beads that represent great big bacteria, and those tiny little green beads represent viruses. When I pour dirty water through a water filter, the water flows through, and it traps a whole bunch of the microbes, all the bacteria, but those tiny little viruses were able to fall right through the membrane into the water. That's really what's tricky. And the Lifesaver bottle, though, has holes that are much smaller. They're only 15 nanometers in size. That's thousands of times thinner than the width of a single human hair, and it's smaller than our smallest viruses. So if I think about, by comparison to a regular water filter, the Lifesaver filter is more like this kitchen sieve in comparison. Much smaller holes. When I take another cup of my simulated dirty water and I pour it into my other filter, you can see that nothing gets through. All the microbes, bacteria, and even the tiny viruses are trapped by the Lifesaver filter. So it's a really unique technology that solves the big problem, making sure that all the microbes are removed from our water. But it does have a shortcoming. The smaller I make my holes, the harder it is to push water through. You need more and more pressure and energy. And the second problem is the holes themselves don't remove any dissolved chemicals. You need something else as part of your filter to do that. So that brings us to our next technology. This is Alan Cummings, the man you saw at the beginning of the presentation, using the Selden water stick. Mr. Cummings works at Selden Technologies, and they've created a couple water filters. The picture you see here is the water stick's big brother, the water box. Now, what's interesting about their technology is they didn't invent it to provide water to people in disaster situations. They actually designed it for outer space. One of the biggest hurdles to manned space flight is bringing enough water for the astronauts to use when they're traveling in space. Water is very, very heavy, so they don't want to bring that much of it. So NASA asked people to create small, portable water filters uh, that don't require much power, 
and would let the astronauts reuse or recycle the water on the spacecraft. And that's where the uh, Selden water stick was born. And Stephanie Wilson is one of the astronauts that helped test the prototype devices when she was up in space. Their filter depends on a material called a nano mesh. And that picture on the left is a microscope image of their nano mesh. And what's special about the nano mesh is the way it's woven, it actually has much bigger holes than the lifesaver bottle. So water can flow through pretty easily. But they're still able to keep out those teeny tiny microbes because of a special material that they put in that filter. They put carbon nanotubes. This is a gigantic model of a carbon nanotube. They're long skinny tubes made entirely of carbon. Um, this model just shows you the shape and structure, but the real carbon nanotubes are about a hundred million times smaller than this one. Very, very tiny. As I said, thousands of times thinner than the width of single human hairs. They're very small. But what's special about carbon nanotubes, or any carbon in general, is that pollutants, chemicals, and microbes like to adsorb or stick to the outside of carbon. So here I have these foam pieces. These represent pollutants, uh, microbes, and chemicals I might find in my water. When they flow through the filter, they come into contact with the carbon and they stick to the outside. They attach to it, or as chem uh, chemists and scientists say, they adsorb to it. So um, there are these tiny tubes of carbon, because they're so small, they have a lot of surface area, lots of surfaces for those chemicals and uh, microbes to uh, come into contact with the carbon. And the way we can weave that mesh really lets, as the water flows through, all of those, those contaminants to come in contact with the carbon. And it's very effective at removing everything that we want to from the water. So I can demonstrate the water stick for you. I have some polluted water right over here. I have a glass to catch the clean stuff. All I have to do is pump this bulb a few times to send water through the water stick. You can see I'm catching clean water on the other side. And it is perfectly safe to drink. Delicious. So that's another technology where we're using nanotechnology to purify our water in some new ways. The problem though with both these filters, and actually the problem with any water filter out there, whether or not it uses nanotechnology, is that we have a problem called filter fouling. That means when you use your filter to clean water, the stuff that you're removing from it can actually clog your filter. In uh, some cases, the microbes can start growing on your filter, which is pretty gross when you think about it. Um, and it doesn't become effective at cleaning your water anymore. So you need to clean and replace your filter on a pretty regular basis. So wouldn't it be great to have a self-cleaning filter? One nanotech researcher had an idea about how to do that. This is Chad Vesetis. He's a young researcher just up the road at Harvard University. And he had an idea about how to improve carbon nanotube filters. So that picture on the right is a microscope image of his filter. And you can see that it actually really closely resembles the one that we saw from Selden Technologies. But what he's doing is he's taking advantage of another property of carbon nanotubes. They are very good at conducting electricity. So what we can do with this carbon nanotube filter, he hooks it up to a small power source. It doesn't have to be powerful. It can be just a few AA batteries. But once you electrify your filter, you're doing something fancy called electrochemistry. Now all that means though, is the electricity that's running through your filter, when the stuff gets trapped in your filter, those microbes and chemicals, they get broken down, degraded or in inactivated by the electricity. So as a result, your filter stays clean for longer. You don't need to clean it or replace it nearly as often. So this is a really innovative uh, technology. It's still in the research phases. Um, so it's not commercially available like these other filters are. But hopefully we're going to see it develop and it's going to have an impact in the next few years. Uh, what's special about this one is it won't just help small water filters. It could be scaled up and really help any water filtration system out there. So it's very promising. In closing, um, I want to leave you with a few thoughts that I've just shared a few stories of real people that are using science and engineering skills to solve a real world problem. But something that I want you to think about right now is what you can do to conserve water. Just because we have as much clean water delivered to our homes as we like doesn't mean we can be wasteful with it. Our world in general is running out of fresh clean water for its growing population and we should conserve it whenever we can. Think about what you use. Three gallons per minute of water that you spend in the shower. 
There are 40 gallons of water used with every load of laundry, 15 gallons every time you use your dishwasher. Running your garden hose, nine gallons of water per minute. So please take a moment and think about how you can conserve water. And uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Please come on up after the presentation. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day here at the museum. Thank you very much.